Namaste. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome. Welcome to my channel. My name is Sadhana. For those of you that are just joining here for the first time, I'm an intuitive reader and healer, and I have been spending a lot of time the last few years doing uh, more teaching, uh, tarot deep dives and things like that. And I have decided as an extension to the Lenormand series, which is linked in the description box below, I am going to go through many of my Lenormand decks and give you more detailed feedback on what I think of them um, and if I'm working with them and how I work with them. So that'll be a little bit of a walkthrough with, uh, with more of a, of a chat. Today, we're going to look at the Magpies Lenormand, uh, which is a truly beautiful, beautiful Lenormand deck. It is, uh, has, uh, qualities of an oracle. It's a, it's a Lenormand with a twist. And as we go through the cards, that will become, become clearer. These are large cards. So these are tarot sized cards. So you do need, I'm just going to get out a RW. Here's the CS, the CS tarot. So I'm just lining that up. These are exactly the same size as a, as a tarot card. You need a very large table if you are going to do a grand tableau with this deck. So this is not something that I could do on camera with this particular deck. I would use this deck for three card, five card readings or so. Um, could do a, a six card if you did three on the top, three on the bottom, if I'm if I'm working online. So yeah, it's a, it's a really big deck. It's beautiful. It is um, probably has a black core. Um, I'm going to say probably 380 GSM. It has these beautiful blue edges. This is the Kickstarter version. So the first version, uh, first edition. And I know that on Rosen's website or her Etsy shop, which is also linked down below, there is now an Owl Lenormand and there has been a different version of this deck released. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the cards. Okay. So let's dive into the deck. I will mention the guidebook uh, briefly as well, too, um, as we're going through. <clears throat> I really do like this artwork, and I have a couple of Lenormans that one of them is the Claire de Lune, and I think I have another one that looks in the dark. Um, looks as if it's in, in the nighttime. What I was going to say is that you could blend together your, um, your, your nighttime decks, the decks that are set all in the evening in the darkness together and do a lovely combined reading. And that's something that I have done in the past. Okay, so here we have the rider. We see in this card, the rider uh, is moving away which you could interpret this as the rider moving to the right. But if it is important to you that the rider has a direction, this is could be a little confusing. So the riding, the rider is moving, you know, into the table, so to speak. One of the things that's striking me uh, on the camera right now are the is the luminescence of the horseshoes. That's kind of something. But you do get the energy of a swift, swift moving rider, um, which is a an important part of um, the meaning of this card. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, um, I guess I can do it this way. I just hope there's no shadow. It feels funny to, to turn the cards the other way when they're numbered that way. That's what I was thinking of Venge with the Lily Black. And I'm wondering if there could be some sort of three voices reading also with Flowers of the Night or something like that. Um, just a thought. This is an absolute stunning uh, clover card. Now let's also look at the details. So you'll notice that there are no numbers on the cards. And if you are a beginner, the numbers could be important to you in learning that. So that's one thing that, and I don't know if the next edition has numbers on it or not. The other thing with the number of moons that are in this deck, you just need to 
be mindful that you understand that there is a moon card, right? The moon card is the moon card and we're not really using the influence of the moon in any of the cards. Now saying that, I want to read to you uh, from the words of Roseanne from the guidebook. And this is something that is very um, non-Lenormand, so to speak. Um, what you see in these cards will always be more important. She's referring to being more important, more correct than what is in the guidebook. Follow your heart and listen to your instincts and feel encouraged to take up the pen and write down your own intuition or use your own intuition. Intuition is not necessarily something that we work with in Lenormand. Um, the, the clover is the clover and it refers to a little, little bit of luck, uh, less illumination than the sun card. So when we, if you are working with intuition, then this deck becomes more of an oracle than a Lenormand. Tamian, I found a five week. Whoa, that is amazing. <laughs> that is a that is a beautiful sign. Okay. Does this not remind you of a card in the Hush Tarot? So this is the ship. And we see a little leaf floating down the river. And this is funny coming from, we, I just came off the Margaret Peterson discussion and we were talking about the metaphor of the river. And here we see the ship, uh, the little leaf floating down the river. This is the number three card. What is What would be different with this card? Uh, as far as meaning with a traditional Lenormand. So the, the ship has the energy of foreignness overseas. And so using a little ship, a little leaf on a river really does change the metaphor. It, it just doesn't have that feeling of overseas. I think so too, um, that this deck would work well with that. Coloration is a little different, but there's a lot of sepia tones in this deck that might look really nice with the Hush Tarot. I don't have it on my um, stand beside me, so I can't, can't do that right now. Okay, now I have seen this in other Lenormans before. So the house here is a cocoon of sorts. We have these moths. And this makes sense actually, because the house, I'll pull this to the side. Um, there's some other cards that are connected to this particular house and why the creator has chosen this house. What I, the, the other thing too, is the fact that the house is in a tree. And so if I were going deep, I could bring in the metaphor of the tree and if the house and the tree came up beside each other, bring in that connection as well too, if you're going to read this deck uh, intuitively as opposed to reading it Lenormand style. This to me looks like a birch tree uh, with a new moon. So again, we have the opportunity here to speak to the energy of the moon that is in the background. And if synchronistically we're doing a three card and this came up during a new moon, you know, wouldn't that be, that would be really beautiful. The tree that is in the house is different than the tree, I believe, that is in the, um, in the tree card. The other thing too that strikes me is that choosing a birch tree, um, and if I look to the, the tree on the left side of the card, when I, when I think about the tree card, I think about a substantial tree, a, an, an old tree, an ancient cedar so, or something like that, or an old oak. I don't think of the tree as a, as a birch tree. So that's working with this deck is, um, I, I think one of its strengths is reading it intuitively. I don't think you can read this deck. Uh, straight up Lenormand, you would have to substitute the meaning of, of some of the cards that, that I'll share with you in a bit. 
Then we have the clouds. So normally the clouds are right and left. Traditionally, the cards are right and left, dark and light. And in this deck, we have dark below and light above. So you would, if you're going to read with direction, then you would need to have cards above and below to make sense of that. So that could make that a little bit amp ambiguous. So let's, I'm just going to read to you what, uh, they're very short, the descriptions, uh, how she interprets the clouds without direction. The clouds are trouble in clear skies. They might be a brief obstacle demanding respite and anticipation before the path is clear. They may be heavier, obscuring the path ahead in darkness. Regardless, it's hard to affect them. Clouds move on their own schedule. It's an interesting interpretation. Okay, next one. This looks like the meandering energy of the snake. We also have a, an eclipse in the background. So if you, it looks like an eclipse to me. You could also interpret that as a, as a ring or a circle perhaps. But it does look like a lunar eclipse. The meandering effect of the snake as opposed to other associations with the snake card. And there is a relationship. So when we get to the caterpillar card, I will, I'll share that. The snake is a hidden figure in the grass, a patient threat that may spring like a bear trap. Ah, so there's an error in this book. Um, I'm just seeing because this description is the same description as for the caterpillar. Okay. It's present is not its presence is not always obvious and perhaps there's just a sense of dread or caution that rises. Or perhaps only its skin will be found and you will know you've been lucky. It does look translucent, doesn't it? Okay. This is the coffin card coffin card. So we have another moon cycle. We have a full moon cycle. What would you think about using this deck for moon readings and keeping it on your tarot table to supplement um, moon energy? That might also be an option. And I hadn't thought of that necessarily as a feature that this deck would um, Yeah, I'm kind of thinking, hmm, maybe this, or even using this as significator, as a significator card for a particular moon cycle. When I think of the, the fullness of the moon, there is a sense of release. So that works for me in connection with the coffin. So the coffin represents, much like the death card, it's a, it's a card of ending, um, a card of finality. We definitely can't go back from the coffin. This place may come at the end of a long journey or from the end of a relationship with someone. What is different in this card is the coffin traditionally is read with direction and depending on which way the coffin is pointing might have a, a different, a different energy to it. The bouquet. It's really pretty car. This is a scythe. So the owl is descending to for a catch during the full moon. So let me know what you think of that. I, I'm okay with this, uh, and I really like the whip as well, too. Let's just go right on to the whip. The whip is stunning. I love that idea that, the, that a lightning strike is the whip. That works. That works for me really well. Um, it, 
if you read it as repetitive, uh, that might be a little challenging, but the whip, because you know what I mean? There's a repetitive nature to the energy of the whip. Hi, Danielle. Welcome. Okay. And then we go to the, the birds. Not a pair, but we have three birds. So I'm just going through another deck here. I just want to make sure that I, because I know there's some different order of cards. Yes. Okay. So three birds, not a pair of birds. So what does that mean? What is that? So in a, a traditional Lenormand deck, birds can mean a pair of, a pair, a couple, um, a a pair of friends. It could refer to siblings and so forth. And so Roseanne has chosen to, to put three in this, in this deck. Now the 13th card in a traditional Lenormand is the child. And there is no child, lady, and gentleman in this deck. So what this deck has, uh, instead of those and the child is not necessarily used as a significator. Um, but what this deck does is I'm going to move these to the side. And then we'll just look at these three cards here. So we have the caterpillar. And you can read this metaphor. So instead of child, uh, gentleman, and lady, we have caterpillar, chrysalid, and moth. If you are looking for a Lenormand deck that gets away from the tradition of those significators because they are gender oriented, there are other ways to get around this. And you probably all have a collection of Lenormand decks that, that do this in a different way. I'm thinking of the wooden, it's not called the wooden, um, A.L. Schwartz's Lenormand. He just uses the upward and downward facing triangles. I mean, there's different ways it has been depicted, but Roseanne has chosen to bring in cards that represent aspects of the journey. Whether you want to replace these cards and assign one to gentleman, lady, and child, of course you could do that. But I think there's something else that is emerging here. The caterpillar um, stage, the chrysalid stage, and the moth stage of life unto themselves have um, aspects of, you know, stages of life, life um, lifespan. I don't, I don't know if we, it'd be kind of interesting if this card came up with the death card, with the coffin card, but um, right, because moths don't live very long. There's also something about the fact that this is a moth and not a butterfly and the, the light, the light in this deck. So that's something else um, that you could definitely work with. So yeah, so this is a, a very different, uh, and we, we are going to do some readings at the end, and we'll see how these cards come up in the readings. But yeah, so you don't have a 13th well, these cards aren't numbered for that reason, okay? So then we do uh, go back to the fox. And so here is your uh, fox card. And the fox is on the moon. <laughs> the fox is on the moon. So shall we look at these three animals together? So we'll go fox. Bear. Two, I guess, because we have stars next, right? Fox and bear. And again, we have a either uh solar eclipse right sorry i was pausing there a solar eclipse um i guess that's what that is right it's a solar eclipse and then we have a full moon for the fox 
and you can read into that whatever whatever you whatever you will polar bears so there are a few decks that use polar bears instead of black bears or grizzly bears and to me again a slightly different energy using a polar bear than um, than a black bear stars 16 is stars it's a beautiful card and that constellation could very well mean something let's see if it's intentionally a constellation and go to the the guidebook the guidebook is in a different order oh, no. So the guidebook is in a different it's in a different order than the oh no it's not there we go stars the stars are always overhead but are clearest when viewed through the darkness perhaps there they there are a distant hopeful point to follow they are or maybe there are strange messages in the constellations regardless they are far off and it'll take a journey to reach them so her interpretation her meaning is a little bit different um, then, so I guess that's one of the reasons, right? If you already read Lenormand, you can read the cards with the keywords you are familiar with and then build in the energy of the extra cards. Here is the dog. Okay, and there is no stork, no stork in this uh, deck. She has included, instead of stork, a cat card. So we have cat and dog. The stork card in the Norman for me is a really important one. It's about life cycles, it's about change. Now the energy of life cycles is brought in through the three cards that we just looked at right? Seasons, uh, natural seasons of life, life cycle, very much a part of the stork card. Um, sorry, very much a part of these three cards, which is the energy of the stork. And so yeah, so she's added instead of stork, she's added cat. I have, is that the Big Dipper? Did anybody else um, see a particular constellation in that card? Oh, where is it? It's here. Oh, yes, it is. It is the Big Dipper. You're right. Yeah, with the with the North Star. Aren't you clever? I want to go to the to the guidebook. So the cat has a particular meaning in this deck and it goes to the, you know, the energy of cats. And I know other decks, you can substitute the cat for the dog card and the cat card would have the same number as the dog card. I'm thinking of the Celtic, the Norman, for example. The cat is here to please itself and above all and that above all else. Whereas the dog is single-minded desire to please. That is not to say the cat is malevolent or a pure loner. To have scritches, one needs a sympathetic hand. Enjoy their presence while possible, but know that the cat is well beyond your control and will scratch if seized. Whereas the dog, with the dog, there is no challenge here, no resistance. But there are times when that's what's needed most. Support is powerful, can restore faith and show up defenses. Just remember that devotion should be repaid in kind. So very interesting to look at these two animals in contrast with each other, right? Okay. 18 dog, 19 tower. So the tower is a spider web over the moon. Kind of beautiful. And of course, this is going to have a completely different flavor from tower institution. 
what what I what you can get here is the um, the the distance, the loneliness, or the on high. It is. It it does. So I think there is. If you read Lenormand and you have that as a basis and you use this deck and you allow this deck to be itself, you know, not criticizing it for not being a straight up Lenormand. So bring in your experience with Lenormand uh, and do three card readings, do small readings. I don't, um, and just, just let it, let it be itself. I think that's an important part of working with a deck that tries to do things differently so what i was saying is the spider web um the spider web in this picture looks like it's up high so that is a, an association with the tower card the tower cuts through the wholeness of the sky foreboding but distant inside there is safety but isolation okay i guess the spider is safe in the spider web its elevation can offer a big picture view. However, the details are difficult to see from on high. From its window, the horizon is further. But so solid ground. This is a translation from French. I should have read the French first. I haven't actually sat down and read the French translations. Okay, let's carry on. This is a gorgeous card. This is the garden card. This is simply beautiful. Simply beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and then mountain. Crossroads. So crossroads, we have a tree. This works. This works for me. And I think there's an ant or some sort of insect on the path. And you could, depending on the number of cards in the spread, allow these paths to point where they where they go the it looks like the bug is traveling in in this direction but you could allow the the crossroads card to to connect whatever you need it to connect to i think the mice card is brilliant the mice are destroying the the wheat so it's a it's a great it's a great mouse card we definitely don't want mice in the crops. So this is a very traditional, uh, traditional meaning here. And actually, I'm, I've got the piatnik out here. Look, the, in the piatnik, the mice are also in the wheat field destroying the wheat. I think of several different Lenormand decks where the mice are in the cupboard or they're inside the house causing damage heart it's kind of beautiful beautiful also i guess you've noticed we don't have playing card associations on this deck so i i would not read unless there was something that came through really loud and clear and i and i saw a spread that had three queens i might speak to that but that's not a built-in part of this particular deck if you're working with playing card associations. And here is the ring. Very curious about this one here. The ring is not found, but created, and therein lies its power. A well-kept ring will shine and gleam forever. One left to tarnish is a tragedy. 
Regardless, it will outlast you. So take care and caution when making promises. Remember, this is a card about commitment, contracts. Be proud to bear them. And then we go to book and letter. Book and letter. So in this deck, the book is open. And I don't think you can read the words on the book. That's kind of a fun thing to do if you can actually read the book. The letter is sealed. The, se the seal on the letter is not broken. And the book is open. So into that, of course, you could, you could read something. This is the magpies, Lenormand, right? So lots of birds in this deck. Mm -hmm. And on the Piatnik, the, the book is open and the letter is sealed as well too. So now traditionally we would go to the gentleman as 28 and the lady as 29, but we don't have that. So we're gonna go straight to the lilies or the lily. really pretty and I wonder if she includes a maturity in her meaning she says a lily is renowned for its beauty a flower's bloom is a temporary thing and doomed to end but while it sounds very bouquet to me its petals are soft with a clinging touch stroking one is a tactile joy and it's important to seize those little pleasures when you can Okay, so quite a different interpretation. Now let's look at sun and moon in contrast with each other. So there's your sun and moon. There are so many moons in this deck. Hi, Heather. And you know, with all the gorgeous moons in this deck, I feel a little bit um, let down with the moon card. I think the potential for this card could have been extraordinary. I don't know, like all the other cards are so beautiful, but these two cards is just something that feels a little lackluster to me. Maybe that's me being too picky. Keep score, moons versus, versus beards, that's birds, that's funny. All right, so then we need to go and find the key, which is right here. So here we have, right, a physical object. So this is kind of outside of the, the, the mood of this deck, if you will. The fish is really pretty. However, 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 there's only two fish. And fish is not about pairs, right? It's It can, can be about flow. And I the way that the fish are drawn feel, I get the identity of flow, but I don't feel the abundance. And I do really like a, I love a Lenormand card where you see a whole bunch of fish, like a big school of fish or a big catch of fish in a net. That that works with me a lot. Um, works with me well. So she does she use abundance for fish? I have a feeling not. No. The fish have scales that flash and gleam under the waves, like silver and gold. Catching them is the hardest part, requiring as much focus as forecasting. Their wealth may be a tempting but drag the net too long and there may be clearer waters 
I would have a hard time reading this deck with the meanings that are suggested in the guidebook. So I'm going to, when I do the readings in a, in a moment, I will interpret through, so start, you can start thinking about a question if you want to post a, a question into the chat. Um, we can, we'll pull three cards, do a three card reading. Um, or if you want to pick a topic card, I will do, I will do that for you as well too. Mm. Sorry, I lost my train of thought because Amber's mm. infiltrated my space here. Uh, and then the last two cards. So we have Anchor, which has an octopus on it. So the anchor for me is about stability. When I see the octopus, I think about emerging, emerging from the dark. So there might be a crossover here with the... Um, with the moth card coming out of the cocoon and the anchor is hidden security it's present is undeniable as it roots everything connected to its place it's heavy okay so it's just me with the the whole octopus um using the reference of gold to get to abundance. Uh, yeah. And then the final card. So instead of the cross, she has got, she's used the albatross. And I'm sure you all know that expression of the albatross um, as one of kind of a doom and gloom kind of energy. And I'm gonna to read to you her description for the albatross. The albatross is the truest elm emblem of what has been earned as the bird flies alongside lonely ships it is a, it is a it is a welcome relief for tired eyes its very existence is a gift but hung around the neck it is heavy and an emblem for all to see of a callous mistake retribution causality an inescapable path. I actually need to look more into the history of the term of the albatross. So, yeah. Thanks for posting your question, Heather. I'll get to that in a moment. I just need to get somebody to pick up Amber for me, and then we'll do a couple of uh, we'll do a couple of quick readings. So I, I like Evangelina's comment. It is, for sure it is. Okay. Okay, so let's go to Heather's question. And I'll see if there is a significator I want to work with, or I'm going to do a random three card. Yes, I was just petting you, and I don't like the feel of your fur on my cards. No, you are very special, but not near the cards. All right. Um, is offering sound healing services at this boutique wellness center aligned with my highest good at this time? Okay. All right. So let's hold space for Heather and her sound healing offering. If you were to choose Is it aligned with your, hmm. This feels like I did a lofty question for this, but let's, I'm gonna do my best to tie this in. So my two questions are, what would be the significator for the sound healing? And so healing, wellness, health is tree, right? Healing. Uh, the tree is close. What's on either side of the tree? Is there um, is there peace on either side of the tree? 
is there is the garden near the tree you know that's kind of what i want to see to answer this question you know what i mean like we, we want to so i'm going to i'm going to use the tree as a significator for health and then we'll see what is surrounding the tree okay I will have time to do uh, one other reading. So if you want to uh, post another question in the chat, I will um, get to that. One more shuffle. All right. And cut. For those of you that don't know this, this method, um, this is what I do. So I go through, so there's the garden and I'm going to look for the tree and then look at the cards that are surrounding the tree. The mice aren't surrounding the tree. That's a good thing. The cards sound so nice. Can you hear them sliding here? The clouds aren't near the tree. That's a good thing. The albatross is near the tree and the whip. Okay, so um, let's go like this. Okay. So we have the heart and the whip. So like I have to back up to get even five cards in. So Heather asked if it was in her highest. What I'm, if I'm reading this as a story, And I'm looking at the, sorry, I'm just, I get so anal with the way the card position is. Um, isn't that interesting that she asked about highest and then the end of the story, the bird is high, right? And so there's a, it's like, there's a, also look to the fact that this is a new moon. So new moons signify new beginnings, new intentions. And then we also have, the caterpillar, which is a, um, right, this is an early phase. This is a, like a, like a new beginning kind of energy. So we have new and new, new and new. Um, okay, so let's look at what effect does the whip have on the heart? I'm going to dive into this. So I, I might only do one reading. Um, what effect does the whip have on the heart? The whip is, I hear the sound. Can you hear the sound of the lightning, like the crack of the whip? This feels like a heart attack, you know, quite literally. I see, I see the, I'm, I see the, uh, like the, the veins, the veins, um, this is a creepy kind of story. I remember when I was pregnant with my fourth child and um, I actually heard my veins cracking and popping. Um, that's a, it's a weird association. So like there's a crack, there's a whip on the heart, whipping the heart into shape, repetitive emotion. There's something that is affecting the heart. The heart is challenged. The heart is so Heather asked if it was in her highest. Okay. When you are doing the sound healing, by chance are you working with bowls that are those crystal bowls that are associated with the chakras because i know the crystal singing bowls they right they're aligned with the chakras 
And if the crystal singing bowls are aligned with the chakras, I think that the heart showing up as the first, as the first card in this five card, I know that's, it wasn't laid down that way, but we're, we're focusing on this as a um, sound healing as a, as a health question, as a health gathering. There's something about the heart that wants to be healed. Perhaps there are um, clients. Perhaps there's clients in uh, the heart. Oh, what would you call it? You know, like in the cardiac. Is is there is there an opportunity for cardiac care? Bizarre question, right? And I'm 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 reading intuitively. <laughs> Right? This, this to me feels like a heart attack. Cardiac, cardiac care. And I don't know which direction to go with this. Does this have to do with um, profound emotional healing? So is this with, you know, when people are emotionally fried? Okay, so here's another thought, Heather. When people are emotionally fried, singing bowls of a lower frequency, so in the, the root and the sacral and the, the solar plexus chakra, are much easier to listen to than singing bowls that are in the higher frequencies, right? Because the nerves are fried. So what I'm seeing here is 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 the is a response that is not about you this is a response to what this can offer or perhaps the kind of market that you would um the kind of market that you would benefit from reaching out to this feels like transformation this feels like Uh, something quite spiritual. And I know I'm associating, associating this also with the cross, but there's something about the on high and the fact that you, and then here we have a, the beginning of a, of a new life cycle sort of thing. So, okay, these are very angelic, gentle, and I use a heart opening meditation. Okay, so that's in alignment with what you do. With this card here, I want to bring your awareness to the fragility of the people who are lying on the floor. I'm assuming they're lying on the floor. They could be sitting seated, seated in a meditation too. But there's there's some, there's some awareness of that whip card that feels important. And the only reason I share this is I remember I have an experience when one of my teachers in when we was yoga, um, not physical asana practice, but chanting and meditation classes and things. So she had this brass bell and we would sit down when we were gathering and she would ring this brass bell, like ring, ring, like for a long time, like maybe as long as a whole minute to shift the frequency of the room. And when she felt the energy of the room going down, she'd pick up this bell and she'd ring this bell. And at that time, I was going through a lot of stuff. And that bell was so hard on my nervous system. So I think there's an honoring here of people's nervous systems, people's fragility that feels important. And so now I really feel like I'm leaning into the intuitive potential of these cards. And as, uh, was it Van who's described it that way? What was your word, Vange? I know Andrew has another another word. Um, Lenorical. Yes, this comment. Lenormical. Lenormical. Yeah.
So I guess that's what I would suggest. I would suggest starting with your foundation as a reader of Lenormand and then allow the deck to take on its own energy. Purple is a very healing energy. It's a very high frequency color. Bring in the energy of the moons. Use them. They're there. The tree also is a new moon, interestingly, Heather. So newness, new. Maybe this is also speaking to setting intentions. Part of the practice, perhaps, as people gather would be to, to um, bring an intention to mind. And I'm sure you do that kind of work as well, too. Erica. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What do you think? Great, great. So those of you who are looking at the cards, shall we do one more three card? I feel like I want to do one more. I'm going to be live in the Facebook group at six. So I just want to be respectful of starting on time. Um, but let's do one more. Does anyone else have a question? You're welcome, Heather. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to ask a question, another event question, and you can help me to interpret it. And this has to do with an event that I am planning. What is the most important thing that I need to know about the event that I am planning? Okay. Um, it's a, obviously it's a wellness event. And I will use the garden as a significator and also pull out cards the same way. Okay. These are beautiful quality cards. Um, and because it's a small deck, it's really easy to really easy to shuffle. So I'm gonna go through same process, find the garden. There's the garden. Oh, I love this card so much. Ship and dog. I've done a reading about this event before. So um, the book and the coffin. Full moon. Full moon. Oh, that's so interesting. I am planning this event at a new moon, not a full moon. And we have uh, a mix of moon energy in this reading. Okay. All right. So the interesting that the dog has come up. I have um, I've done a reading on this event before. And the dog was really important. And I was thinking that I would be relying mostly on destination, uh, destination people. But the way that the dog showed up, it was it was kind of a reminder to don't don't forget about people that are close to home, loyal clients, loyal followers as well. It is a bit of a it a uh, bit of a journey to get to this event as well, too. For most people, I don't live in a very central location, and I'm I'm hosting it here uh, in uh, at a large event site. Okay, book, open book. Okay, so this is an event about studying. What does the coffin have to do? What does the coffin energy bring in? So I asked, what what do I need to know about the event? Coffin. So release. I 
don't really want to change it to full moon. This is also the event is out of out of full moon. You know, we don't necessarily have to read the cards literally, but I find that absolutely fascinating. The study, maybe we could include education about full moon release and how to uh, process the retreat. You know, if it, if the retreat is happening during a new moon, then the full process somehow needs to be completed at a full moon. Wouldn't that be interesting if everybody who was at the event, we had some sort of a virtual experience two weeks later, and that we could share in the processing of the transformation of the event. My goodness, that's pretty darn cool. The coffin is still dark and quiet, a place for reflection. This place may come at the end of a long journey or from the end of a relationship with someone. But regardless, it's time to spend time on closure, be it relief or mourning. Burying a burden isn't a betrayal if it has been dealt with. A mourning, a cocoon, and a reliquary. Very interesting. So what is this telling me? This is telling me that the process of release is important as the process of intention. And so perhaps um, perhaps that needs to be woven in either two weeks after. You like that idea, Heather? Either two weeks after or during the closing so that there actually, actually is a, a letting go process. Fascinating. That's really fascinating. Okay. This has been fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending an hour with this deck with me. And next Wednesday, I'm going to be back and share with you another Lenormand deck. And my intention is to do this regularly on Wednesdays before my Facebook uh, live stream. Um, yeah. Yes, to help people complete their healing. Hmm. I never, I never would have thought of that. So that's, that's kind of beautiful. All right. Good night, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Namaste.